Hello, everyone, and welcome to Building Inclusive Futures, Crafting and Implementing a DEIA Strategic Plan presented by Candace Pine. Um, welcome, everyone. And I think we're going to get started, so I'll just turn things over here to Candace real quick. Um, let me give her her bio. Candace Pine is the Rare Books and Manuscripts Librarian in the Walter Haviger Special Collections and University Archives at Miami University. She earned her MLIS degree from Kent State University and a BA in Creative Writing from Western Michigan University. Her work currently focuses on cataloging rare books, as well as processing, arranging, and describing manuscript collections for her institution. In addition, her research and interests include the study of the concepts of diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility, and how to apply those concepts to library and archival institutions as a means to make them more welcoming and accessible spaces for all. Uh, we'll hold questions until the end. So if you have them, feel free to put them in the chat and then I'll bring them back up for Candace at the end. Um, and I think you guys know how this works now, having already attended the first session. So we'll just roll right into it. All right, the floor is yours, Candace. All right, thank you, Adam. And um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining me today to talk about uh, crafting a DEIA strategic plan. I know that strategic planning can be a challenge and it may seem somewhat daunting at first. I know it certainly did for me. Um, I was a bit nervous um, about joining my library's DEIA um, strategic planning work group, especially because I didn't have any previous experience with strategic planning, um, but they assured me that that wasn't going to be a problem. Um, so I dove in, everything really worked out well. Um, so now I want to share my experience of going through this whole um, process of putting together a DEIA IA strategic plan for the Miami University libraries um, and the hope that it's going to be useful to anyone who might be thinking about starting or maybe even is kind of in the middle of creating a, a DEI related strategic plan for their institution. I think there are ways to apply um, the, the planning process I'll be talking about um, to institutions um, of all sizes, as well as to whether you are um, creating a plan for, say, your institution as a whole or perhaps even just for one department. Um, creating a, or regardless of what your situation is, I hope that what I have to share is going to be useful to you. There we go. All right, so before we dive in, I do want to quickly read uh, Miami University's land acknowledgement. So Miami University is located within the traditional homelands of the Miamia and Shawnee people, who, along with other indigenous groups, ceded these lands to the United States in the first Treaty of Greenville in 1795. The Miami people, whose name our university carries, were forcibly remo removed from these homelands in 1846. In 1972, a relationship between Miami University and the Miami tribe of Oklahoma began and evolved into a reciprocal re partnership, which included the creation of the Miami Center at Miami University in 2001. The work of the Miami Center serves the Miami tribe community and is dedicated to the revitalization of Miami language and culture and to restoring that knowledge to the Miami people. Miami University and the Miami tribe are proud of the work and of the more than 140 Miami students who have attended Miami since 1991 through the Miami Heritage Award program. And for uh, more information about our land acknowledgement, you can visit our website and get the link up there. All right, now I'm actually going to talk about the library's diversity statement um, in a little bit, but I also like to include it at the beginning of presentation. So you're getting a sneak preview of uh, part of this diversity statement now. Um, so it says, in alignment with Miami University's statement on diversity and inclusion, the Miami University libraries are committed to fostering an environment where the highest ideals of diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility support our employees, students, staff, faculty, and university community at large. DEIA efforts are viewed as fundamental to our mission and integral to our service model on campus and in the broader community. We are an intentionally open and inclusive community that embraces the full spectrum of human attributes, ideas, perspectives, and cultures. We aspire to high levels of intercultural competence to serve our community and actively work to ensure the tenets of diversity and anti-racism influence all aspects of our work, including as it relates to our collections, services, spaces, and people. 
And um, for the full statement, because there is a little bit more, um, you can find that on our website. And um, again, the link is on the screen there. So to start off, I'll set the scene for our DEIA strategic plan work group. So the Miami Universities has a um, just a general strategic plan, and that's called Catalyst. Um, and that's updated every academic year with new goals and initiatives. And so for the 2022 through 2023 year plan, um, one of the initiatives was to form a DEIA uh, strategic plan work group. And so the charge for our group um, was pretty simple. It was just to write and begin to implement a DEI strategic plan for the libraries. Um, and you may have noticed that I have been saying DEIA strategic plan while the work, work group was initially called the DEI strategic plan work group. Um, and there is a reason for this, and I'll get to that shortly. But to get back to how the group worked, um, so two people were appointed to lead the work group, and then three more members were identified and invited to serve. So that's how I personally joined this work group. And to also touch on the logistics of how our group kind of functioned um, during this process, um, almost all of our meetings were carried out over Zoom, um, which helped us to accommodate everyone's schedules and different work locations. And we organized all of our planning documentation um, just in a shared Google Drive. Um, so that way we all, we all had access to everything we were working on and we could easily collaborate on various documents, which really came in very handy. And before I go any further, I want to acknowledge all of the fantastic colleagues who I got to work with on this project. Um, the leaders of our work group were Elizabeth Kerr. Um, she was our um, former coordinator of strategy assessment and DEI. Um, she's actually no longer working at my university. She started a new position at a different institution earlier this year, um, but we're so grateful for all of her help and work on this. And our other leader was Ken Irwin, who is one of our web services librarians. And then the other three members of the work group um, were uh, myself, of course. So I'm from the Special Collections and University Archives Department. Um, we also worked with Jenny Presnell, who is a humanities and social services librarian, and Elizabeth Starman. She's a library associate who works in our technical services department. Um, so you can already see that we had good representation from around the library, which was definitely a great benefit in this whole process. How did we get started? Um, well, we needed to figure out how we wanted to tackle this project. Um, so we had some more like big picture discussions to get us going. We talked about how important it would be to take advantage of the different perspectives um, that everyone brought to the work group. We all have different knowledge and experiences with the library. Um, so we were all encouraged to share our unique thoughts and ideas. And one of the first goals that we discussed um, was to try to deepen the diversity of our collections and of the teachings um, that the librarians do. That was something that was really important to all of us that gave us something to sort of focus our efforts on as we started working, which was helpful. Um, and then I personally also felt um, strongly about adding accessibility as another one of the main tenets um, of our strategic plan. It's vitally important that we consider accessibility in our spaces, collections, and services when we're making a strategic plan like this. Plus, I wanted it to be like immediately obvious that accessibility was going to be a part of this plan and that no one felt like this important issue um, was being left out. Um, so in one of our first meetings as a work group, I, I brought this up and my fellow group members felt that this was important as well. So um, as I kind of briefly mentioned earlier on, we had a slight name change right away. So we went from being called the DEI strategic plan to the DEIA strategic plan. And another thing that we discussed um, was that we wanted to include an explicit definition of diversity in our DEIA strategic plan. We wanted to make sure that it was completely clear what we meant by diversity when we used that word in our final strategic plan, uh, so there could be kind of no confusion about it. And then one of the most important things that we talked about was that we wanted to develop real action items to put into the strategic the strategic plan that would lead to actual changes. Um, there was some initial worry that we would just write some sort of nice sounding statement that would never really go anywhere or do anything. Um, and that's definitely not what we wanted. Um, so we decided right away that we were going to come up with real actionable items to put into this plan um, so they could actually get implemented. 
we didn't want this DEIA strategic plan to be a static document. Um, we wanted it to have life and to help us as a library to keep growing and changing for the better. And another thing that was very helpful to us um, was that our workgroup leaders reached out to a contact they had at the University of Dayton, who um, had recently been involved in a DEI strategic planning process and um, asked if they would be willing to share some of the documentation they had from their institution's own planning process. And thankfully they agreed. Um, and the documentation that they sent us was very useful. Um, they sent a, a sample project management template, um, multiple templates for surveys to use to get feedback from various constituents and stakeholders, um, as well as a final copy of their DEI strategic plan. So all of this was really fantastic. Um, it gave us great examples to use as starting points for our work um, on our own DEIA strategic plan. So we had some helpful examples to guide us, and we had some productive initial conversations about this project. So then it was time to start brainstorming. Um, we were still looking at things from kind of a bigger picture standpoint at this point in time, um, but we were starting to refine our thoughts and ideas and trying to make some more um, specific decisions. So this is a glimpse of what our first brainstorming session um, for our DEIA strategic plan looked like. Um, we were meeting virtually, so we used uh, Jamboard to contribute our thoughts um, about various questions all at the same time. Um, so we talked about what we wanted the, the format of the plan to look like, you know, should it be just a simple PDF document, um, a web page, a lib guide, etc. Um, we talked about how many years we wanted the plan to cover, um, how many just quote unquote things we wanted uh, or we were hoping to accomplish with the plan, as well as um, whether the plan should name specific people who would be responsible for working on each initiative that we were going to uh, list in the final plan. And we also discussed things like securing buy-in before we finalize the initiatives uh, we put in the strategic plan, as well as making sure the initiatives we developed could be spread out um, over different departments within the library. So there wasn't just like one department um, or maybe only a few staff members who had like this huge workload added to their plate. Um, we were very aware that all of our staff are very busy and have plenty of responsibilities already. Um, so we had to remember to be realistic about what we could include in the DEIA strategic plan. So another thing that came up in our discussions was writing a diversity statement for the library. Um, so remember how you got a sneak preview of that statement earlier. Um, well, now we're going to talk about it. So Miami University has a, a diversity statement, but we thought it was important to have our own specific statement to the libraries that we could tie our DEIA strategic plan to. Um, so that was one of the first tasks that we started working on um, because we wanted to have that locked down so it could guide us. Um, However, we didn't want to take up the whole uh, work group's time on that. So um, at this point, we actually split into two groups so we could work on two different tasks at once. So um, I worked on developing the diversity statement um, with Elizabeth Kerr, one of our work group leaders, and the other three members of our team started working on drafting surveys that were going to be sent out to various constituent groups to get their thoughts about various topics um, that we wanted to address in the DEIA strategic plan. So we'll get to that too, um, but first I'm going to talk about um, writing our diversity statement. So I mentioned before that we wanted to have an explicit definition of diversity in our DEIA strategic plan, um, but where it actually ended up was in our diversity statement, um, which is also linked in our final DEIA strategic plan. And so we, we ended up deciding to use uh, Miami University's existing definition of what constitutes as diversity um, because we did feel that they ha already had a very robust definition. Plus, we thought it would be a good idea to have that sort of continuity um, with the university. However, aside from that definition, we still had to write a whole statement for the libraries. Um, and so we started out by looking to other institutions for inspiration. Um, after all, why completely start from scratch if we don't have to? Um, so we had a list of um, what Miami University feels are its um, peer and aspirational institutions. Um, so we researched um, their specific diversity statements if they had one publicly available on their website. Um, and that kind of helped get us started. 
So as we were, you know, reading through all of those various diversity statements, um, we started making a list of what we thought the strengths and weaknesses of each statement were. You know, what we liked, maybe didn't like, or perhaps thought could be done a little bit differently. Um, and then we also made a checklist of things that we knew for sure we wanted to include in our own diversity statement, um, and even a few things that we wanted to avoid. So here you can see this is a portion of what our list of strengths and weaknesses um, of some of those diversity statements looked like. Um, I know the text is kind of small, um, but you may also be able to tell that um, some of the strengths are also um, in red text, which is something I went back and did after um, first creating this list to just sort of mark parts that um, I thought were particularly good and relevant. Um, now this is a pretty simple list, but it really was a huge help in keeping us organized. And here is a screenshot of part of our checklist of things we wanted to include and things we wanted to avoid in our own statement. Um, we also included examples from the plans that we had looked at to help sort of illustrate what we wanted to go for in our own plan. And my apologies again that this text is uh, kind of small and probably not very easy to read, um, but like the last one, it's a very simple document, um, which is also kind of the point. Um, we wanted to keep things simple and easy as we were working, um, and I certainly recommend to others to do the same. Um, I think keeping things as simple as possible is always going to save you time. So once we finished with all of our research and planning, um, it was time to start writing. And as I said before, there were two of us who were working on developing the diversity statement. Um, and we decided to divide the work of actually the writing the statement um, between the two of us, um, which ended up working out very well. Um, we each wrote our own assigned sections and then we shared those with each other so we could give each other some suggestions and feedback. Um, and then we combined both of our parts into one whole statement. Um, and then that final draft was shared with the other three members of our work group so they could also give their comments and suggestions. And from there, it went to the Dean of the Libraries for his feedback and his approval. And I also um, especially wanted to note that um, in our diversity statement, we identified four major areas that we wanted to focus on. Um, so those were our collections, services, spaces, and people. And these categories are very important, um, and I'm going to continue to reference them as we go on. And this is a screenshot of our uh, diversity statement, which can now be found on our website. Um, some of it actually is cut off because it wouldn't all fit very well on the slide. Um, but you can see it's a pretty robust statement. Um, there was definitely a lot we wanted to say, so we put as much in there as we could. All right, so next I'm going to talk about the surveys um, that we developed and sent out to various constituent groups to get their feedback about the library. We really wanted to get a lot of input to help us focus our DEIA strategic plan, um, and especially those action items, on things that would be the most useful and helpful for our staff and students. Um, we felt that it was our job to find real ways to better serve our staff and patrons, and who could better tell us what they want to need from the library than them, right? We didn't want our strategic plan to only contain our own ideas. It needed to take everyone's thoughts and ideas into account. So this was when we were still working as um, two different groups for a while. Um, Elizabeth and I were working on the diversity statement and the other three members of the work group um, were working on developing the surveys. And so the first thing that they did um, was they looked at uh, various surveys that had been um, shared with us by that contact at the University of Dayton. Um, they had put together some really excellent and thoughtful surveys, and it was just so helpful to be able to reference them. And in the end, our work group members um, created three different surveys and each one targeting a different group. So there was a survey for library employees, one for uh, campus partners, by which we meant departments or groups around campus um, that have strong working ties with the library, like people we engage and collaborate with a lot. And then finally, there was a survey that was going to be sent out to students. 
So I wanted to show you a few examples of the surveys that we sent out. Um, and these are all from our working draft documents that we were using at the time. Um, the, the final surveys were all sent out as uh, Google Forms, um, but it was a little easier to get some screenshots of what our um, draft documents looked like um, to put here. So this first one is um, from the survey that we sent out to our library employees. And um, Elizabeth and I had actually finished working on the diversity statement in time to uh, jump back on with everyone else um, and work on the library employee survey, um, which was actually the last one we worked on. Um, but I was very happy that we were able to jump back in um, and work on this one because it's definitely the longest and most robust survey that we sent out, um, as our staff obviously have the most familiarity with the library and its inner workings. And so the screenshot um, that you see here is only a small portion of the full survey that was sent out, um, but I wanted to give you a general sense of what it looked like. Um, the survey was broken down into various uh, topical sections with a number of questions falling within each section. And for the most part, people were able to um, answer our questions on sort of a multiple choice scale. Um, but we did also provide spaces for people to write in comments if they wanted to provide more explanation or they wanted to um, bring up something they thought maybe we missed asking in the survey questions. Um, so that all ended up working out really very well. And next, you can see uh, this is part of the survey that was sent out to our campus partners that um, often collaborate with the libraries. Um, this survey had some more open-ended questions, um, sort of in the hope that we would get some more detailed responses that would give us some good information to go off of. And finally, here is what part of um, our student survey looked like. Um, for, for the student one, they were able to answer questions again on more of that sort of multiple choice sort of scale, um, where, which we thought would make it simple and quick for students to take, which we thought would hopefully result in more students taking the survey. So, the survey that all went out, we collected all of the feedback, and then our next step was to, of course, analyze the responses that we received. Um, but first, we had to make sure that um, all of our work group members had completed uh, Institutional Review Board, or IRB, training, um, if they hadn't previously done so. So a couple of people had already done IRB training, um, but a couple of us, including me, um, hadn't. So we had to make sure that was done before we were allowed to uh, view the survey results. Um, so that's something to keep in mind for anyone who might be doing surveys like this. Um, you might have to do that kind of IRB training before you can proceed with, with surveys and getting all the results and everything like that. Um, but then once that IRB training was taken care of, um, we all looked through all of the survey uh, results that we got back and um, really analyzed those responses to look for common themes and ideas that were emerging. And then that helped us to begin solidifying our ideas for what our DEIA strategic plan um, could and should address. Now, I do want to note that um, the surveys were not the only ways that we collected feedback um, about the libraries and our DEIA strategic plan. We also identified some key groups that we wanted to have some more in-depth discussions with. So we set up meetings with those uh, various focus groups, and that allowed members of the work group to have some really productive conversations about the DEIA strategic plan with some of the important stakeholders in the libraries. Um, so the groups that we talked to included um, the Dean's Library Student Advisory Committee, um, our Office of Institutional Diversity and Inclusion, or OIDI, um, Student Council, the Graduate School DEI Advisory Board, the Students with Disabilities Advisory Council, and the Miami University Libraries DEI Committee. So we divided these uh, meetings up um, with these different groups among our various work group members. And some of the meetings happened in person while some happened over Zoom. Um, but overall, we got a lot of helpful feedback. And some of the final initiatives that were put into our uh, DEIA strategic plan actually came out of these discussions. Um, so it really was worth it to have all of these meetings. OK. so. What were our next steps now that we had written our diversity statement and collected lots of feedback? Um, well, it was our diversity statement that we actually used as a roadmap for moving forward. 
Um, in the diversity statement, we identified those four eight major areas we wanted to focus on, our collections, services, spaces, and people. Um, so we took all of the feedback that we had gathered so far and organized the ideas that came out of those surveys and conversations under those four focus areas. So that way, our DEIA strategic plan would directly line up with our diversity statement for the libraries, and we would have that continuity um, through all the DEIA-related things at the library. So here is a look at how we organize things. Um, we started off by making just a simple list of um, ideas for topics and initiatives under each of those four main categories. And then we turned each list into something that looked like this. Um, so we started to rank each item on the list in terms of what we thought uh, could potentially be an easy win, um, what was urgent for us to try to work on right away, what things had potential but maybe weren't exactly urgent. Um, we also had a, a, a quote unquote devil's advocate category um, for anything that we wanted to say maybe wasn't exactly a DEIA related item. And then finally we had um, just a, a not now category for anything we thought wasn't too urgent and we could wait on addressing for um, maybe a little bit longer time than some of the other items. And making these lists of items and ranking everything in terms of urgency was incredibly helpful. Um, it really helped us to start refining our ideas and narrowing things down to what final initiatives we would put into our final um, DEIA strategic plan. We had our, our ranked lists for each of our four uh, main focus areas. We combined those lists into one big spreadsheet that looked like this. Um, and this way we could see all of our ideas for each category uh, right next to each other and, and start gaining a sense of how our different ideas could maybe work together in the plan. So now that we had all of our, ide our ideas organized, it was time to discuss what we wanted to actually prioritize for the final strategic plan and what could be saved for later. Um, and we had to be very realistic about what the libraries could commit to and what we thought could actually be accomplished within the next two to three years. And we knew we had a lot of great ideas and there were so many things we wanted to do, but we did have to acknowledge that everything was going to take time and that we are really going to be playing the long game with all of this. And in addition, we were especially concerned about the staff members who would be involved in various initiatives that we were going to outline in the final strategic plan. Um, we didn't want to overburden anyone and we didn't want to be piling up a bunch of work on, you know, just a few people or a few departments. Um, so that was a factor we really needed to, cons to consider as we were making our decisions as well. And I can't stress enough the importance of this. Um, everyone is busy with their own work and you can't add to that workload without considering the impact that it is going to have on your staff members. So after all of that planning and discussion, we finally identified what initiatives we wanted to include in the DEIA strategic plan, as well as who should be involved in each initiative. Um, before we officially finalize anything, um, it was important that the, the members of the work group had meetings with all of the people we wanted to be involved in our various initiatives. It was essential for us to do this because we needed to make everyone aware of what we were planning and how we wanted them to be involved. Um, we didn't want to have the, the final strategic plan come out and have the initiatives be a surprise to the people that we wanted to assign to be involved. Um, so we had conversations with everyone to let them know about our plans and we asked for their feedback on our ideas um, so they could help us refine those initiatives even further. And these meetings ended up being very helpful and productive. Um, and in the end, we felt like we had gotten buy-in from everyone that we talked to, um, which was fantastic. So after speaking with all of those staff members and getting their feedback, um, the work group members then worked on writing the final initiatives that were going to be included in the DEIA strategic plan. And the way we went about doing this was um, we divided up the work between us. So we had settled on five initiatives and there happened to be five of us in the work group. So each of us wrote one initiative. Plus each person was assigned to edit one other person's section. So that way each initiative was already in like pretty good shape by the time we met as a whole group to go over all of the initiatives together. 
So having done a lot of uh, the legwork already meant it saved us time when we all met together. And another couple of things I wanted to note um, about our initiatives is that um, they did list the specific staff members who would be involved in each one. Um, and as I talked about before, we had already had discussions with those people, so they knew what was going on. Um, but we thought it was also important to um, put it all in writing to just kind of make it official. And furthermore, we also put in projected timelines for each initiative um, when it would be worked on um, and or completed by. Um, we really wanted to give a specific time frame so people would have that incentive to start working on these things as soon as possible. So to help illustrate what I mean when I talk about how we wrote out each of these initiatives, um, here's a draft of one of them. This is the initiative that um, I wrote regarding creating and implementing a standard accessibility training for all library employees. And each initiative was broken down into parts like this. So there's an executive summary, an overview of the initiative, and then of course, the specifics of the initiative. So the initiatives being included in our plan were now done at this point, um, but there was still more to write. We needed all of the other parts of the DEIA strategic plan. Um, so once more, we decided to divide and conquer. Um, we each chose different parts to write, and then we shared our individual parts with the rest of the work group so everyone could offer their comments and suggestions. Um, and in the end, the final outline for our DEIA strategic plan uh, looked like this. So there was an introduction, and that included our motivation, methodology, and an introduction to the main categories we were focusing on. Again, those the collection, services, spaces, and people. Next were our initiatives, um, which actually ended up being called recommendations in the final plan. Um, so there was an introduction to uh, the initiatives, and then the initiatives themselves were inserted. And there was a conclusion to the plan, of course. And then there were also a few appendices. Um, so one appendix lists our implementation teams. Um, so you remember how I said before, we uh, made sure to list the specific staff members who were each uh, working on each initiative. Um, well, that information was actually moved out of the initiatives themselves and then put into this appendix. And there was also an appendix that listed some of the work um, that's already in progress as we wanted to acknowledge that some things were already starting to take off. And there was also an appendix for what we called our quote unquote parking lot. Um, and that essentially was um, a list of some ideas for the future. And I'll get more into some of those things um, a little later on, um, but for now, let's stick to how we finished up um, our DEIA strategic plan. So after all of our individual parts of the final draft were written, everything was combined into one large document. Um, and again, we were all given time to add our comments, questions, suggestions um, to all parts of the draft. Um, and then some further refinements were made. And I can't say enough about how helpful it was to have all of us in the work group be able to collaborate on all parts of this strategic plan so much. Um, having all of our different perspectives and ideas be taken seriously made us feel like we were all being heard and that what we had to say had value. And I really feel like that made the plan stronger in the end. So I highly recommend to anyone who takes on a strategic, strategic planning project like this um, that you definitely make it as collaborative as possible. Now, switching gears a little bit, I did want to mention that there was an outside influence that ended up um, affecting our strategic plan. So around the time that we were finishing up working on it um, is when Senate Bill 83, which was introduced in Ohio. Um, so the bill claims that its aim is to overhaul the state's public higher education system. And like many other similar bills in many other states, um, Senate Bill 83 took aim at anything related to DEIA and proposed its own alternative that they refer to as inclusive excellence. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of that. Um, so those of us in the work group were not exactly thrilled to hear about this bill, and we were uncertain how it might affect the DEIA strategic plan um, that we were nearly finished with. Um, so our work group leaders, they um, spoke to our dean about it, 
And for the most part, the biggest change we ended up um, having to make was changing the name of the plan. Um, so what was the DEIA strategic plan was renamed the Miami University Library's Commitment to Inclusive Excellence. So we made that name change and then we shared our final draft um, of that with the dean for uh, the dean of the libraries for his comments and approval. Luckily, he didn't have too much feedback for us at this point and we got the approval fairly quickly. And once we had that, the final document was formatted and officially submitted, um, which also officially ended our work group. But I'm not going to stop there. So I wanted to share that some of the work recommended in the DEIA strategic plan is already underway. Um, so we have some diversity audits planned for um, some small portions of our collections, um, including our children's collection and our leisure reading collection. There's also um, work being done on policy changes and updates to help improve staff hiring, onboarding, and retention. Um, this topic in particular is actually incorporated as an initiative um, that was built into this year's uh, Catalyst, which if you remember is the Miami University Library's strategic plan. Um, so that work is going to be ongoing for some time. Uh, work has also begun on creating a sensory room within our makerspace. So that was an idea that came out of our conversation with the Students with Disabilities Advisory Council. Um, those students shared that having a sensory space available to them in the library that they can go to if they're feeling overwhelmed and need a quiet place would be very helpful to them. And our staff really wanted to get started on that right away. Um, so that project actually got started fairly quickly. And in addition, we have already purchased some um, additional electric powered adjustable height tables um, and checkout stations, which we hope are going to help improve the accessibility of the library to our patrons. And we are just thrilled that real action is already being taken as a result of our DEIA strategic plan and all of the conversations that we've had with our staff and other partners and stakeholders in the library. And we hope that progress will continue to be made. And on that note, I wanted to acknowledge our plans for the future. So we did include language in the DEIA strategic plan that indicates that it should be updated with new initiatives, um, hopefully every two years. We really wanted this to be a living document, not a static one. Um, so our goal for this is that the plan should continue to evolve to meet new and changing needs. And as I mentioned before, there is so much we want to do and everything is going to take time. So for now, we need to be patient and let this be just ongoing or incremental work that should one day result in some real systemic changes. And we have tried to provide some guidance in this area already. Um, I mentioned before that one of the appendices in our strategic plan is our uh, parking lot, which is basically a list of ideas that we couldn't fit into the final strategic plan, but we still wanted to document them. It's our hope that future versions of this uh, DEIA strategic plan could include and expand on some of the, the ideas um, that we came up with. We thought it would be useful to future staff who may work on updating the strategic plan. You know, we wanted to help them by giving them sort of a jumping off point to start from. And it remains to be seen if this will happen, but we did our best to make um, things easier for future work on this plan. And finally, I wanted to end on some of the key takeaways we had um, for this whole DEIA strategic planning experience. So first of all, open communication and collaboration are vital. Um, and this goes for within the work group as well as outside of it. Um, the members of the work group, we all discussed everything that we did. Everyone was encouraged to share their ideas and all of our suggestions and points of view were respected and taken seriously. But of course, the work that we did was also greatly influenced by many other people, um, our staff, students, library partners and stakeholders, etc. Um, everyone's input made a difference and ultimately that made the final strategic plan much stronger. Next, set clear goals early on in the process. Um, this will really help you to have a vision and keep you on track. Um, 
And that's not to say that things won't change along the way and you may have to readjust a bit, um, but it was so helpful to us to have made a plan from the beginning. You know, things like we wanted to have real action items in the strategic plan. Um, we wanted to add accessibility as a main tenant of the plan. Um, we wanted to write a diversity statement to guide us, et cetera. Um, if we hadn't decided on doing things like that early on, our DEIA strategic plan would have looked very different. So I definitely advocate for setting clear goals and a plan as early on as possible. Also, make sure you take advantage of everyone's experience, expertise, and point of view. Um, don't assume that you know best or that you know everything that's going on in the library because chances are you don't. Um, but when you bring people together from different areas of the library or even from within one particular department, um, you'll get a much fuller picture of what things are like and you'll get a lot more ideas about how things can be improved and enhanced. So make sure you talk to and listen to as many people as you can. And another thing I think you should really always keep in mind, uh, be flexible from small things like being flexible about scheduling meetings to accommodate more people um, to bigger things like being flexible about changing the name of your entire plan at the last minute. Um, you never know what sort of hiccups or challenges might come along. Um, so it's always important to be flexible so you can keep things moving forward. And finally, take other people's needs into account. I really can't stress this enough. Everyone is already busy with their own work, so you need to be careful not to overburden them. When you're working on a strategic plan, I think it can be easy to get caught up in all of the things you want to accomplish and you want to get started on them all right away, um, but it's not necessarily realistic. It's important to remember that real people are going to have to take on the tasks that you're planning. So you need to make them aware of what you're planning, get their input about it, and be pragmatic about how and when the tasks are going to get done. Um, otherwise, if you don't do that, you run the risk of things just not getting done, um, as well as possibly alienating those staff members who might start struggling with trying to take on the work that you want to assign to them. Um, so always prioritize your people first. And on that note, I will go ahead and wrap things up here. Um, if you have any comments or questions to share, um, go ahead and, and do that now. Go ahead and pop all of that into the chat. Yes, thank you, Candace. That was enlightening. Um, yeah, like I said, put the, or like Candace said, put the questions in the chat and I can read them for her. Um, in the meantime, while you're thinking of some great questions, I have a few of my own. Uh, first off, I. I wanted to ask, like, how did you guys go about resolving any, like, conflict or maybe some tension points? I know it's obviously a very collaborative side. I would assume that some points of contention came up. So how were those kind of things figured out or what and whatnot? You know, really, I can't think of any major tension points that came up. Um, I think, I don't know if it, we maybe just got really lucky with the group of people that we had, that we were all just very open to, to discussing everything, you know, and trying to just do so without any sort of judgment, I guess, just, you know, being open to what anybody said. And even if you maybe didn't agree, um, you know, we just, we just talked through it. It really, it, I think it really speaks well of all of the great people that I got to work with that it actually was kind of a pretty smooth experience with us as a group. Well, that's good. And then um, my other question was, I saw you guys, you had a lot of documentation. Um, you made those forms and whatnot. Is is there a long-term plan to keep those, uh, make them available to, you know, the community that come that comes later? Like, what is the plan for those those kind of doc the documentation? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, all of that um, is saved in in a in a Google Drive. Um, so, you know, we we have access to that still. Um, and I think if they have, you know, future people come in that, who are going to work on updating the plan, like I talked about with some new initiatives and things like that, um, that they'll, they'll be given access as well um, to all of that stuff. So they can, you know, they can see what, what we've got, um, what we've saved. And, or like I mentioned, some of them was like lists of ideas for the future and everything. Um, so yeah, I think that's definitely something that's going to be retained and then kind of shared out as necessary. Um, and I think some of it, especially if there's anyone here who is, you know, you know, I really want to see more of like what your survey questions were or something, um, you know, you can feel free to reach out to me. My email address is up there. Um, and I, I think I'm allowed to share, um, you know, some of that kind of stuff. If Because I mean, like I said in the beginning, we had some help from the fantastic people over at the University of Dayton who shared stuff with us. So, um, you know, I think we're willing to, to share our stuff too, if people want to look to it as an example. 
Okay. Fantastic. Uh, what was like, um, how, how much feedback did you, did you get from the students? I know that maybe it can be harder to get, you know, people engaged, you know, especially not inside the library. So how was that? Right. Yeah. Um, I, I should have had the numbers up, but I, I think it was the surveys were sent out to kind of a select amount of students. It wasn't just to like the entire like student population at large. Um, so, so yeah, and we got, we got um, a decent amount of feedback. I mean, I, I'm sure, you know, we could always use more, um, but we, you know, we got enough of a response that we felt like we at least had, you know, kind of enough to go on to, um, to start kind of saying, okay, it seems like these are, you know, common themes, common questions um, that we're that we're getting from students and things like that. Um, you know, we figured the people who took the time to respond to the survey were the ones who cared the most and were going to give us good answers. So uh, we, we we took it what we could get. <laughs> that makes sense. And then my final question was, um, is there a way for people to continue providing feedback? Is there like new mechanisms for people to like comment on the plan and how things are moving forward, like outside of just the group that worked on it? Oh, yeah. Um, actually, I have to double check. I think the intention, at least, um, was that we would um, be able to have like a link up on the page where we have like um, our diversity statement and, and things like that, where um, people could, um, you know, contact us um, if they wanted to to you know share their thoughts or whatever they might have on that i was seeing if i could bring it up very quickly but um i don't want to take too much time doing that but um but yeah because yeah we do want to have people you know still fr feel free to you know contact us and say you know i have this this question about something that you put or you know i i want to know more or i have new ideas and things like that um so yeah i think it's definitely if we don't have that it's definitely a good idea um to have a good mechanism to have in place all right thank you um any questions from uh chat anyone Get your last chance or is everyone just ready for lunch? Like, <laughs> really acceptable. I'll give me 10 seconds as uh, Evan Struble's uh, technique, if everyone knows. Count to 10 and then if nothing happens, then you move on. <laughs> all right. Um, seems like we're all good. So thank you. Um, thank you, Candice. Have a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Um, uh, we'll go to lunch now. Let you out early. <laughs>